In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the airbrush in Photoshop for coloring comics, pinups, illustrations, and any other art you want to create. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to learn a thing or two. If you are new to this channel, I make art tutorials for coloring comics and I share beginner artist tips and advice for young artists starting out and seasoned veterans. So you can click the link above to check out other tutorials I've made and be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content that I'll be putting out in the long run. So first things first, once you come into Photoshop and you come here and choose the, so this is, these are your tools in Photoshop. Now this is the brush tool. Uh, everyone who uses Photoshop should know that. I mean, it has an icon for a brush, so definitely you know that's the brush. Now, I'm using a digital tablet. I'm using the um, Intros Pro. So if you right click on it, it will show you different brushes that you have. So these are, uh, you actually, when, when you open this, you have like default brushes if we come to this one, this is the soft round airbrush. It's the default soft round airbrush without any noise turned on or any, uh, what they call it, pressure sensitivity, nothing. It's just the default round soft brush. So it just makes all your blobs and strokes really soft and smooth. So you get these smooth transitions when you're moving from kind of um when you're making when you're brushing in colors you have this smooth transition so now for beginners when you come in here and you try to work with this you see that you it's just it's not working out you you need a harder brush to do this now one tip I will advise you to do is when you want to use the soft round brush you should pair it with the lasso tool so with that selection i use ctrl h command h to hide my selection once you hide your selection you can make you can get harder sharper cuts and selection so you still have your gradient now you can see this side where i selected is hard whereas here because i'm brushing in lightly is soft so this is the this is just the bread and beans of this technique there is no other really secret big deal about the technique is very easy to use all you have to do is just make a selection of whatever you whatever shape you're trying to fill in with your lasso tool or any other selection tool you want to use and then you just brush into the shape gradually just filling it in depending on how much you want the color to show through or how much light you want to be in the shape you are feeling so let me just show you some more examples say we have this we can just fill this in with a neutral gray right and we can then start breaking it apart and making some sides darker than the others so it's just a really quick way to kind of fill in your forms and have everything read with like um a gradual a graduated gradient so you just you're not just having uh you're not just having a hard harsh strong line you're having this gradient of of color with your with your brush so let me just show you how this is going to work in your image 
So, for anyone that hasn't seen this particular video, I already did a tutorial on using photos as a reference guide and then editing the picture so you can see the shape of the light form using some tools in Photoshop. So, if you haven't seen this tutorial, I think you should go and look for it in my channel. It's, it's probably called uh, One Trick in Photoshop or something like that, but I can still leave a link just at the top so you can go and watch this video if you haven't watched it and don't forget to leave a like on that video if you enjoyed that little tip for helping you color faces and yeah don't forget to leave a like on this video too and share it with a friend so youtube will know that yeah this guy this nigerian boy is making some pretty good content thank you thank you very much you're far too kind so anyway um in Photoshop now. Oh wait, wait. We've been in Photoshop since. So anyway, uh, as you can see, I'm just using the lasso tool to select the planes and shapes that I have on Wolverine, and then I'm using the airbrush, like I showed you earlier on. I'm just using the airbrush to gradually fill in the area that I want the color to affect and i'm feeling i'm using the brush slightly i'm just gradually brushing it in i'm not just brushing it very hard because if you press on if you press the pen down very hard that's if you're using a pen tablet if you press it down if you put pressure on the pen it will leave a very dark it will leave it will allow a lot of color onto your image so if you press it lightly it will just exactly it, it, i mean you know what it sounds like already now it will apply the color lightly so you just want to press lightly just brushing into the forms just a little bit depending on the depending on the um the area or the form that you're trying to render so as you can see for the hair now i'm just brushing in towards the middle because that's where is going to catch the most light especially for hair now you can go and watch my other tutorial i made for how to color hair and i can explain exactly how i approach coloring hair like this but it's basically the same thing so hair is going to catch light towards the middle so that's why i'm brushing in lightly towards the middle and then i'm selecting the catch highlights where that's the part of the hair that's catching the lights, the, the highlights from the light source. And then I brush those in with a lighter color. So right now I've selected the jacket and I'm keeping everything on Wolverine. If you haven't noticed, I'm keeping everything brown or grayish brown. So even my, even his jacket, if you look closely, you see that it's not was blue. It's just, it's brown, but it's very desaturated. So it looks cool and it's looking like it's towards blue but it's still brown it's just desaturated so the only thing that i'm going to have that's going to be blue on him is going to be his shirt the shirt he's wearing inside and probably the glass cup he has in his hand so one thing i really noticed i love about these inks by rari coleman if you don't know rari coleman you really need to check him out. He's a really fantastic, amazing inker. He's worked for Marvel. I really love the way he draws. He has so much understanding of how folds work against a body, against a physique. He just knows how to draw his folds well. So it wasn't really difficult for me to figure out how to render the jacket because he had already um he had already put in enough information enough detail in his folds for me to know the directions and the patterns i was going to create when i was rendering the jacket so one thing you can do is just follow the patterns for follow the pattern the inca or if you're the one drawing it follow the patterns you have already created for your fold so don't just go against the flow don't just go against where the inks are where the line is showing you to go so if you're if the line is curving down you want to make a selection and follow that selection down just follow the shape so everything 
fits well together and looks like it's a solid piece right now i'm just still using the airbrush i really don't use any other fancy brush unless i'm trying to do some texture in the background or i'm just trying to paint in some texture on his jacket for everything else for doing all the base colors i'm just using the airbrush and i'm keeping the selections tight and following the form of the jacket now as you can see i'm using lighter colors just to kind of catch the highlights where the where the light is hitting the jacket and i'm just using i'm not pressing down entirely i'm just pressing slightly so it will just the the gradation won't be too won't be too prominent to be gradual there'll be a gradual gradation and then i kind of have really bright harder cuts for the shoulder part because it's a flat surface if you think about the shoulder the shoulder is if you think about the shoulder as a three-dimensional plane the top is going to be flat so i like having the flat planes i like having them have flat and sharper cuts and then where the the planes that are edgy that are curving downwards i can now then smoothen them out so that's how i usually approach coloring um characters coloring clothing coloring anything that has basically everything that has three-dimensional form just to make it feel three-dimensional and to make it feel really solid to make all the forms read basically so before i started painting this glass cup i had to go on google and just google and just <laughs> wait that just sounded funny go on google and just google so i just went on google and searched for a glass cup to see how it reacts because i kind of have an understanding that when light hits the glass it will go through it and then it will reflect at the opposite side but i wasn't really sure of this my understanding because it had been a long time before i it had been a, it's been a long time that i did any glass studies or stuff so i just went to look at it again to re remember what how it works and i think i was right a little bit so when light hits glass it shines through it and then it hits the bottom and then that will now reflect back upwards and kind of fill in the other portions of the glass so you have to just keep that in mind when you're rendering glass or when you're rendering any other transparent translucent transparent transparent material that absorbs light it's, it's it's the same thing as subsurface scattering but this time it's actually the same thing because it's following the same principles that light uses when it comes through your ears and hits the ears and spreads within the skin it's just the same thing it goes through the glass hits the glass and it's even the same anyway you get the idea if you if don't take everything i'm saying with a grain of salt on this one so you have to go and study your own glass cup so you can pretty much understand it for yourself and see how it works because right now i'm i'm talking about it based on my own understanding and i'm not even sure right now as for this one so i'll have to go back and join you guys and do the studies again so that i will refresh in my knowledge you see we're all learning in this together so let's let's all not just forget and think um we've learned everything no learning never stops so as i keep on making these tutorials for you guys it just helps me refresh my knowledge and keep me on my toes so i'm still going back and doing studies and remembering some things that i have i haven't been taking into note or using in a long while so i just i'm having fun so if you're learning anything from any of these videos don't hesitate to leave a comment leave a like and let me know any suggestions you have 
for videos you want to see later on in the future or maybe just later on within this week because these days the way i'm dropping videos eh? <laughs> i know some of you are asking questions what's happening now anyways this was my process i think very soon i'm going to do a tutorial on how to i love to give a special shout out to my patreon supporters thank you for letting me do what i do and if you love to support my work and my channel you could go down and click the link in the description to subscribe to my patreon page and with all that being said i will see you in the next video peace